Two Edgy Sports, one of the best teams, obviously the number one team in college basketball, men's college basketball that is, is Indiana University, my alma mater. We bring on Dustin DePiriak of the Bloomington Herald Times. Dustin, thank you for joining us. A 72-68 win against Michigan State last night. Very, very convincing win. However, it seems like this game had it all. We had sack taps on one end and then sack taps on the other end, uh, game <laughs> clock operators not doing their job, and uh, Teddy Valentine, TV Teddy, having his one shining moment. So uh, let me ask you this. It was a good win, uh, a very fun game to watch no matter which side you were rooting for. Uh, was it a convincing win to you, a, a person who has covered this team for four years now? You know, I mean, it, it definitely just convinced me that they – they belong where they are. I mean, Michigan State is an incredibly tough place to win. Indiana had not won there since 1991, which is just crazy to think. They've lost 17 straight, and you're going back, uh, you know, you're going back to the Calvert Cheney area, even before, you know, 92 when they were a Final Four team and 93 when they were Big Ten champs. They hadn't won there since before that. Uh, so it's, a, it's an incredibly tough place to win. This is a very good Michigan State team. I, I thought personally that they are the toughest uh, matchup for Indiana. I mean, just considering the size that they've got inside with Nixon Payne, and also the fact that there's, you know, there's, there's no place to take a break with that group. There's, there's no player on that starting roster that can't score and that can't really beat you bad. So for Indiana to go into their place and beat them that way, to, to come from a little bit from behind, you know, uh, to be able to win the game like that and, and Victor Oladipo to do what he did on the ankle, uh, it's an incredibly impressive performance. And, it, and I, I think it definitely shows that, that they belong where they are, that they've earned the right to be the number one team. They've won a couple of these big, you know, you know two uh, top 10 road games in a row now. We'll get to Victor Oladipo and his possible fantastic case for being player of the year in college basketball. Let me ask you this. Very, very early, defensively, this is for Indiana against Michigan State, as you brought up the size inside. When I saw Christian Watford on the block trying to defend Derek Nix, I was thinking that Derek Nix is going to go for 20 and 10. And it surprised me that he did not. Um, and it seemed like he just wasn't getting enough touches on the ball. I mean, is defense, granted, I mean, Indiana is a very good team. However, they are a thin team, if you look at it. With, with a guy like Derek Nix against Christian Watford, you know, that looks like a defensive lineman compared to a safety. So why exactly did they not try to go and attack Watford more? And is that the kind of guy, it seems like he's starting you know, at the four, is that a guy that other teams should attack defensively? Watford, the, you know, it's amazing how much he's matured this year and how much tougher he's gotten. And, and the thing is, they just did pretty much the same thing uh, against Purdue the other day on Saturday. You know, they had played Zeller on A.J. Hammonds, the you know, freshman, uh, who was in they did that the first game, and Hammonds scored 30. I mean, this, you know, Hammonds is the guy that's going to be, you know, all Big Ten, you know, Big Ten all-freshman mm -hmm. team. And he's listed about 280. I don't think he is 280 anymore. He's probably more like 250. He's cut a lot of weight off. Uh, but Watford went toe to toe with him and really fought him for every spot, every position, and fronted him and just just outworked the guy. I mean, as a senior, I mean, he's playing so much more physical uh, than we've ever seen him. And I think he did a lot of the same things, uh, a lot of the same things yesterday. Man. And were there was there an opportunity to exploit that better if you're Michigan State? Probably. I mean, the, you know, Nick probably could have worked harder to get better position. But Watford's fighting really hard. I mean, he's playing as physical, if not more physical, than Zeller is in the block. Dustin, let me ask you this last question for you. I feel like a, a team in the tournament, when they attack the opposing team's star player and get him into foul trouble, it's not only strategy, but it's an art. And not only, you know, trying to sell it to the referees, but getting that guy in foul trouble obviously will always help your chances. <laughs> so let me ask you this. It seems like the two biggest players on this Indiana roster is obviously Cody Zeller and Victor Oladipo. But let's just say down the road, you know, if they get to the Sweet 16, they play like, you know, what, whatever seed that they may have, and they get one guy into foul trouble between Cody Zeller and Victor Oladipo, which one would have the hardest impact on this Hoosiers roster in winning that game? Uh, Zeller, because of you, you don't have an, a, as adequate of a, of a replacement. I mean, uh, you know, oh, you you could easily argue either way which one's more important or which one's brought more to the team. And I think if you know, w without Zeller, they probably weren't in the conversation in the first place. But Oladipo, his improvement is what makes them a national championship caliber team at this point. But the thing of it is, if you take Victor Oladipo out and you put Will Sheehy in, 
you know, you're losing something, you know, in some of the explosiveness and scoring ability, but she can still do a lot of the same thing. He can still defend almost as well. Uh, he can score, obviously. You saw what he did the other, other day against Purdue when uh, Ozebo was out in the second half. Uh, she went crazy and scored 22, went 9 for 9. He's capable of that kind of thing. You can plug him right in there in that you know, small forward position, and you're not in bad shape. Uh, if you take Zeller out of the game, you're looking at Derek Elston, who's a really tough kid and been through a lot and added a lot uh, to this Indiana program, but he's still dealing with uh, a need that can't be at 100%. He tore his meniscus before the beginning of the year. He hasn't been the same guy. Uh, you know, so he's kind of your next kind of backup big man. And then also you've got uh, Hanna mascara Pere, who's an athletic freak but has not kind of figured out how to put it it all together really at all in terms of how to coordinate it. I mean, he's got a crazy wingspan and jumping ability and all that kind of thing, but has a hard time catching the basketball. You know, that's where you're at at, at the center position if you take him out. I mean, you're probably, you know, you're really probably more likely playing small and playing Watford at the five, maybe she at the four or Depot at the three and trying to get by that way. Right. Uh, but you don't have a real big-time post guy if you take Zeller out of the lineup. Uh, that changes the dynamic a lot more than if you take Oladipo out. Again, just more because of replacement than anything. I don't know, you know, you could argue all day who, who's you know the better player of the year candidate, who's been more impressive. Uh, it's a lot of back and forth, but I think if if you're talking about who do you take out in the middle of a game, uh, and and it makes a bigger impact. I mean, I'd have to say Zeller just because of what you got behind him.